right we're recording yeah. and uh you can start okay yeah, nice. cool. yeah. yeah i guess first of all thanks for having me yeah thanks for coming. Uh, yeah so uh yeah let's spend an afternoon talking about um coding lattice problems okay uh namely parameterized hardness okay so these are these are some very nice problems these are some very nice problems uh in the setting uh which you can solve very well because you can see like really close on the crypto uh and stuff like that um uh, but I think we're going to start slow. So we're going to start by defining curves and lattices. And then we're going to go through some like ideas that I think are very nice, that I think are very important. And then we're going to, going to get into uh, joint work combined with, with Huck Bennett, Ravi Chirachi, and Frank Swami, uh, where we take these ideas and we kind of think about them deeply and, and apply them in like maybe some new ways. Uh, to get some basically to complete the picture of the internet artists, these problems essentially up to like some loose small knots that uh, are like, quite interesting. Um, all right, so yeah, let me start by um, if, by the way, I mean, if there are any questions, of course, in the, the lecture, just let me know. Okay, so I'm gonna basically start by talking about codes here, and I'm gonna have the lattices here. Okay. And I'm going to try to do this stuff in, in parallel because they are very similar. Okay. They're very similar options. I mean, of course, codes live in like finite fields, lattices live in like you know uh, real vector spaces. Um but uh, what 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 we have so far is that kind of like progress and like understanding problems for codes that you know, like kind of goes at the base of like understanding problems for lattices because they share a lot of um, similarities. Okay? So, yeah, so what is the code? Okay, so there's a linear code P. Okay, so this leaves in some you know, vector space over a finite field, like FQ is just the finite field of order Q. Okay, um, is basically just any subspace. Okay, so you say that C is the linear code if it is a vector subspace. Well, they have to use the end. Okay, so that's that's easy. Uh, what does this mean? Okay, so this means that um, there is a generator, we call like a generator matrix G. Okay. Um, we need to only do M instead of M. Okay, that's just because notation wise, it will be easier. Um, so, of course, if this is a vector subspace, uh, I mean, they're the bases, right? G is just the bases of C, okay? So you can really just see your code as like just the vector span by this space, like the vector space span, span by this space. The column spin. <clears throat> okay. So that's correct. Um, why are codes important? Okay, so code that originally uh, you care about codes, for example, for robust communication, right? You want to maximize the channel, you want to correct errors, so you need a code. Linear codes are nice because they're very easy to encode for. To, to, it, it's very easy to encode messages. It's also very easy to decode messages when there are no errors. Okay. Uh, different sort of there are errors, but that's, that's kind of what we're going to get into. Um, so, an important parameter to care about the codes is the minimum distance. Okay. And I'm going to write it. Maybe like this. So, <clears throat> okay, so this is basically just the minimum hemming distance between any two corpus, distance corpus. Okay. And I'm going to write the hemming distance. As the zero norm. Okay, so the zero norm of a vector is really just the number of nodes of coordinates. 
And by linearity, okay, this is really just the kind of minimum hemming weight of your code. So hemming weight is just really the zero norm, okay? So this is my linearity is just this. Does it make sense? Yeah. All right. Uh, why is it important? Well, this characterizes the error correction property of the code against the worst case errors like erasures and bit flips. Okay. So you know in the minimum distance that you know exactly how many errors you code is correct. It's going to be roughly d minus one of these errors and d uh, minus one erasures. Um, right? Okay, so these are errors. Okay, let me let me talk about lattices. Maybe is the red okay? Should I put color? Thank you, Rita. Fine. So I can you another color. Or lattice. Okay, so lattices are really really similar. So think about whatever I said there. Just kind of do it over the list. Okay. All right. So. What is a lattice? Okay, it's like a description of the so far end. Um, I, I'm just going to focus on what's called like integer lattices. Okay, so, so they're, gonna, they're actually going to be um, a subset of Z to the N. Okay. Um, and this is just so I don't have to worry about like. Representing your numbers and stuff like that. Actually, for parameterized hardness, that does make a difference. Like, if you want to like round and stuff like that, uh, that, that screws up your uh, your reductions. Okay, so here we need your lattice. Uh, this if basically you can write L as like the column span, like the integral column span of some basis. Okay. Well, what this means that I'm going to have some basis B, it's going to be like an integer matrix, okay? And I'm going to consider all the new combinations where the coefficients are also integers. Right. All right. So very similar to linear code, just like. Well, over the reals. Okay. All right. So, like you have a generative matrix for a code, you have a basis for a lattice. They're really the same thing. Um, and here, people care also about an analogous uh, parameter for a lattice. Okay. And of course, here, like we care about basically the, the norm of the shortest vector. Okay. So, here we care about the heavy weight for zero norm of the shortest vector in the code, non zero, right? Here we care about also the norm of the shortest vector, and we can take several norms, right? So we can take like an LP norm of A shortest vector, there can be several, right? Mm -hmm. We can call these one to one. You can really just look at the basically, yeah, determine the, the, the LP norm of the shortest non zero vector. Okay, and this is also very useful. Um, and, and this is really all the same thing you can do. Okay. Say again. So this is really all the background we need for kind of discuss the problem. Right? Because basically the computational problems around lattice in code, they really center around understanding these quantities essentially. Okay. Um so let me see if I can I have some space. So I have a basic question about the lattice definition, mm -hmm. which is do the does the basis have the same properties like it does in the Fields, for instance, um, so this is not really a vector subspace, right? Because no, it, it's, it's not a vector subspace. Yeah, because it's only integer uh, combinations. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so can I have, say, a basis with more than M elements? Um, you, so you, you mean like- A minimal. Look, look, at, look at the basis. I mean, you can still consider like near independence over R. Over right? R, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you're actually, oh, but then you're actually like, you know, you have to do like near independence over R or over Z, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there is uh, usually, well, usually you can also just focus on that, like, you really only care about, like, full rank lattices, which is the case where, like, well, basically n equals m, and, like, all your vectors are. Like, and you have n vectors. Yeah. In, in B. Yeah. So, so okay. yeah. But 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 you're right, like, we need to choose combinations. I suppose you don't have, I mean, you could just consider where B is uh, full, column rank, I guess. Right? I mean, M could still be less than N. M could still be less than, yeah. As long as they're independent, I guess, the columns. But independent over Z. R, let's say R. Oh, R. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if they're independent over R, they're independent over yeah, Z. Yeah, sure. No, but but you can like, check. What, what's your question? Like, oh, no, no. I'm just saying that B doesn't have to be full rank for this definition to make sense. Oh, because no, in the code, in the code, it's not going to be. I'm well, not but in the code, it doesn't make sense. I mean, C should not be a full rank. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's. I get your points. Like you can have non-trivial lattices of like full rank. Is that what you mean? I don't know if you can. Uh, but I. You can. You can. Okay. I, I'm only just thinking that for a code, it doesn't make sense to think of M as as big as N. Yes. So why would you do that in the lattice? Why? Why would you consider only full rank? Uh, B's full column rank B's question. No, full column rank B's makes sense, yeah. but why would you consider M equals N only in the lattice? The application. Uh, but you don't okay. need to. The point, the point that you don't need to. Yeah. Uh, and there's a conclusion that you care about. So, is there a reduction? I'm not an expert on, on those types of applications. But is there some kind of reduction if I want to know the shortest vector in a um, in a lattice, which is maybe not full rank, can I reduce that to a full rank lattice? Or that's a good question. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I guess I, pro I probably could, because I or I could make the independent vector to be so large that it would never appear in the shortest. Something like this. Uh, no, because there are some other. You can make it large, right? Also, depends on getting very close to it. Uh, 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 no, right? Because if it's independent, but super, super, super large, mm -hmm. you have another vector. Which is, uh, no, but then you're scaling them with an arbitrary. It's like you cannot write it as a linear combination, right? We can, you can, you should be, I mean, you can get really close. There's nothing stopping you from getting really close. But mm -hmm. even if you make it larger. Uh, but you have to include the vector at least once. Sorry? You have to include it at least once, yes. I guess. Oh, but there's still no problem because the others could cancel. Yes, that's probably true. Yeah, so, so, yeah. So they're not. No, but what like... if it's orthogonal? If it's orthogonal, then it should oh, be fine. Then, then, yeah. then it should be fine. But you'd have to find an integer orthogonal. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Okay, fine. Um, yeah. But What's... I think it should be possible. But yeah, yes, there are there are some differences, but I, I guess what matters then is that like a lot of the techniques that you use me for codes, they transfer to the lattice scale, a lot of the techniques that you use for lattice, they transfer to the code as well. That's, right. that's something that we do exploit. Uh, um okay, so maybe I'll have to erase something here because I need to find out the problems. It did it is fine, can I erase this? Yeah. So yeah, just basically a linear code is really just a vector subspace, and you care about the weight, <laughs> the minimum weight of a non-zero code. Okay. This is really just. Number of most relevant. All right, so important problems for codes. Um, well, just there's like a you know, one kind of problem is that oh, it's like the shortest vector, and then you have number two, you can have more, but like you just care about one, one, one. It comes from, from, yeah, okay. I don't want to get into it. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
they can also just forget about the one and just do like this. And then it's like consistent with the, with the code. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, some problems. Okay. So the first one is, I'm going to call it the MCP problem. Okay. For Q area codes. So we're going to write Q. MCP is then for nearest code. Okay. So what happens here is that uh, you have an input, and the input you're given uh, the generator matrix of the code. And you're given targets and some distance count. Okay, and you can really just want to decide if there's a code word within distance k of your targets. For the yet case, okay, uh, there is x. Such that the code word corresponding to x is at distance k from the right. Okay, so having distance between g of x, g times x, and, and t is less than k. All right, so and for the no case, it's really the opposite. Okay, so. Is good for all code words, for all messages. Everything is like don't write it like this. Okay, okay. So does this make sense? So it really just is having whether there is a code word nearby or not. Okay. Uh, this basically corresponds to like maximum likelihood of the code. It's like you get a net, like print, like you get a correct code words, and then you look for like the nearest code word in that distance. Um, so this is like the corresponding decision block. Okay. And uh, when you say that, I mean, of course, you can consider like an approximate version of this, which is what people study. Okay. You can like some sort of gamma MCP. Okay. Where you put gamma here. Okay, so it's like it, it's like a promise problem where it's like either there is a code word very close to your target, or if the code word is like really far from your target. Okay, and think of gamma as being like a large constant. Okay, if you want to keep um so these have about like giving the target, uh, that's for the code word. I can just talk about the special problem where now your target is always zero, which is really asking about what is the minimum weight or the minimum distance of the curve. Okay. This is the MVP problem, so minimum distance problem. Okay. And here uh, is G. And M times M. And now you don't get a target, so target is zero, and you get a this is threshold. Um, and that happens. So basically it's really the same thing, but just we keep it zero. Okay, so and I'm gonna spell it out there. So either there is like a short code word in the code, or there is no short code word. And as before, like we can we can see like the exact version. Okay, which is just this, right? Um, and we can also consider the approximate version. Okay. 
Right? So from this problem, either there's like a very short code or like all code here to in terms of like this. Right. There's zero correlator value in the code right now. Oh yeah. So this would be like sorry, I'm not I mean I mean you're right, I mean you're exactly because like like there is a non-zero code word that's right. Zero, and then here you also need to. That's fine. Does it make sense? Okay. There are, I mean, they're very natural problems. Um, and you can basically add the same thing with the lattices, the exact same thing. They just like, the annoying thing is that they have different names for these problems, so the lattices. Uh, so there are. Um, mm -hmm. So oh. the analogous thing as like NCP is called CPP, it's a closest vector problem. Um, and I'm using the norm, the LP norm in which I'm working, but they usually, if you ask about the cryptographers, I guess they compare this to about P equals P, so LP norm. Um, so that's the input, it's basic. Targets. And so this is found. Um, and now it's really the same type of questions. It's yes, and it means that there is X. There is a lattice point. That is close to T. According to the LP norm. Okay. Uh, and if it's no, then all lattice points are far from T. And let me just point out that okay, so this is going to be relevant for this. Okay, so Uh, just the interesting that so this is like the canonical version of like the closest vector problem, okay? Um, and this is something that doesn't matter in the code frame, it doesn't matter here. That I really, really like to have it be so to have the low case being like you're not just far away from the target, but you're actually far away from like the line sent by the target, like so you look at all the integer multiples of the target, okay. This should be for all. Non zero integer, okay? And I'd like to be far away, okay? They're not equivalent problems, but like basically every hardness result at the CPP actually applies to this, um, to this problem as well. Yeah. So this is an easier problem, right? So in the yes case, there is an X and an alpha such that? No, no, no. Okay. Yes, it needs to be close to the target. Okay. In the no case, you promise that you're far away from okay. any multiple. Okay. And as before, let me just make sure that it's gonna... So yeah, approximate CPP. Um, so again, this same thing. SVP, which is the analogous, it, it is the analog of the meaning this is problem, which really shows us that problem. Um, Sorry, the one with the alpha is the approximate or the one? No, the one with, when you put it, yeah, the gamma is like what you, what you mean by the approximate. Okay. Because now you promise that like, you're far away from well, every multiple, uh, but that you're really far away. I think of gamma being like a million. Like you're a million times farther away than like the yes case. Could you also include like that how far you are should depend on alpha somehow? Uh, maybe. Right. So because at the moment it's like you get, you know, the bigger the vector, the kind of you have like a, a cylinder around the yeah. vector, and you might yeah. want a cone or something. That's yeah. I I, I so the, the the versions that we study the the gamma is like two different levels. Uh, uh, sure. But, but I, yeah, I yes, guess. we could yeah, find yeah. something where gamma is like a function of all. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
No, so I, it's some kind of scale invariance. It makes sense not to think about the problem because you know the the bigger you, it gets, somehow you do expect that. I don't know. Can you can you can you just can you just like just shift the lattice or something? Maybe, yeah. Maybe it doesn't make sense actually. Like if you have like two times two, well, you just like shift. Uh, but then it's gonna be it's it's a bit tricky maybe because. But I don't think lattices are scale invariant the way you're thinking like mm. a one. Yeah. They're translation in there, no. Yeah. Okay. Like, um, even if you go far away from the origin, you expect the same density as near the origin. Uh, okay. That, that is definitely not true. Hmm? Uh, well, <clears throat> no, I don't I mean, mean, like, at well, every point, but. Like, not at every point. Like, yeah, it depends on your Like, a random point. Density. Because, like, that's something we do want to exploit later on. So, like, that's. So, uh, so, for I mean, example, like if you have a code, right? Like yeah. same thing with labs, like code like this can either lead to a lot of like, you know, if you, if you have a certain amount of distance, it means like you put a ball around the origin, there's nothing there. But it could be there could be some other point where you do have any code inside. Not, not not too close, but like definitely like if you put the same ball around this other thing, it will have many codes. But if I choose another code word to put the ball around, it'll look exactly the same. Okay, yes. Right, right. Yes, 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 yes. If you put another code word around, yeah. So you need you need like shift by by another either a lattice point or, or right. like shift by a code word. Yeah, but I meant that the density doesn't depend on how close you are to the origin. It's just, just like how yeah. close you are to another lattice point or something like yes, that. Yes, yes, that, that's true. Because then you can just shift the lattice into the Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, but you know, um, so oh, but let me just point out that the alpha is there for mainly technical reasons. Like we need this stronger version of CDP to prove harness results for SVP. So the problem is easier, that's it. Right? Yes. If you require the thing to be there. Yes. So but then if you prove that it's hard without with the alpha, you've also proven that it's hard without the yes, alpha. yeah. But like but what I'm saying is that this is like the canonical like CDP problem, like you don't have the alpha, right? Okay. Okay. When you do like let's say you didn't want to prove like um hardness for SUP, which I haven't introduced yet, you really it's really uh, handy to have this version of C. Uh, I see. Okay, so that's the only reason why I <laughs> kind of mentioned the moment for this alpha thing, the scale. So it's more difficult to prove hardness results for this version. Just because like every hardness proof for, for every reduction for CDP also works for this version. Basically, all, all the ones I know, they work. But you need hardness for this version too, for it to also follow for SVP. Something. Yes. Right. It's a good test of knowledge, yeah. And you can try to use some other problems and stuff, which is actually something we will do. But, uh, but yeah, I think the reduction is one CDP to SVP. That is not Alright, so as we came, that's the same thing that we're doing this problem. So we're really just deciding whether the shortest vector in the lab is like one below or above the threshold. If the shortest vector in my lap is something that norm, P norm, P low, or above K. Okay, the same thing as before, you can do a approximate version, non SVP, and this is the version like that people do care about. So it's approximating SVP. So, for example, if you have like post from crypto, like things like LWB, like learning with others, uh, which is an average, case, an average case problem, it reduces to the worst case of approximating the shortest vector problem. In the worst case, that is. Um, yeah. And it's still a large constant for lattices. Uh, you mean like the, the, the gamma? Yeah. So, so like yeah, reduce. for now, like, think of gamma as being a large constant, but for like the crypto applications, you need to put hardness for gamma being like polynomial. 
uh, in M. Okay. Oh, okay, they're very big. So very big, so big that like actually you, we we know we cannot do hardness for that type of approximation factor because that implies NP equals to NP. No, no, we know we cannot prove NP hardness for that approximation. Yes. Which is different than not being able to prove hardness. Well, we can't yeah, prove hardness yeah, for anything. Say but... Sorry, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not, we can't prove NP hardness. Yeah, even we can prove any other types of actual hardness. Yeah, I don't know, but you could think that maybe. Like, hard hard. Just say that, like, we can like, let me try some of this, which I will get into in a bit. Like, if it's really weird to talk about approximation factors that are not constant. Um, you can, but like the techniques that we have for like gap, gap interpretation, right? You start with a problem that has like a certain gap, and then you kind of want to amplify it. It's like you cannot do it with the address world. I will, I will, I will uh, discuss that. Um, but the harness results I know, NP harness, so the NP harness results I know, they're like for quasi normal factors. Like two to the log n to the one minus epsilon. That makes sense. So two to the log n is like polynomial, two to the log n raised to the one minus epsilon. Sorry, yeah. can you, I was distracted. Can you repeat? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, so I'm saying like two part is for like things like this. Yeah. Empty <laughs> harness. So I need to use Empty harness. Yeah, yeah. Empty harness. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, no, but it's in coin. It's an NP intersect coin B for like root N or something, right? Or yes. Root N log N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, and that's very close. To like, <laughs> so I think that to get like hardness for crypto, we need like N to the one point five. That's oh really? Going. That's 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 the, that's interesting. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, N to the one point five. So all these classes like uh, unique uh, in the potential line. You know these like search problems. Uh, yeah, roughly, I mean vaguely, but yeah, yeah. Well, can you expect that this might be hard for anything like that? Is there any complexity class? Let's you mean say. like, like, so you, then you talk about like the search problem, right? Yeah. For, uh, right. Um, but this, you could frame this as a search problem, you know, give me the you shortest vector, yeah, yeah, give yeah. me the closest. You care about like search versions. <laughs> right. And, uh, and there's some reductions known among these yeah. things, right? Yeah. So, um, so, okay, so I guess my question more broadly, is there any computational complexity class which for which this is naturally a complete problem? Uh, with with the polynomial approximation, right? right. With the polynomial, I have no idea. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Right. I can tell you, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Nice. Right. Okay, but yeah, so there are these problems, okay? And um, so I really, yeah. You're really seeing what you're doing in lots of things. And let me tell you about so, so actually, the empty harness of this problem, at least for like constant approximation factor, it's, it's very well understood. It's been like a quest over like more than 30 years trying to understand it. Um, and I'm going to have to erase something to talk a bit about it. Um, what do you prefer? Can, can I erase like some of these problems? Yeah, can you just maybe write the four names like on the top? Yeah, of yeah, that you can, can do that. Um, here it's like the codes you have. So you have gamma MCPQ, and you have gamma MPQ. So you treat the field side as a constant, like big spread. Okay. Uh, the parentheses you have gamma CDP keys, so like the, the LP norm, the keys are constant. Um, and you have to uh, by the way, I'm just saying that like the LP norm is really just this. Yeah. Yeah, so it's you can address him in case we I mean, you're asking whether uh, target is particle address or you mean CDP or or well, yeah. but but I guess when the target is part of the left, you can, you can check that. Just like so, like uh, mm -hmm. just just both of the coefficients. It's always unique. Sorry. And it's a unique answer, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
even if it's not unique necessarily. Even like, okay. it should be fine. Yeah. So like like same thing here. Like if you tell me that he is like a, a code word, then I can also easily like check yeah, there. Okay. Um, all right, so let me erase this. Let me tell you a bit about like, what we know about NP markets. Um, I kind of want to do this also in parallel with the two because, like, the, the history is like very similar between the, between the Coke world and the Latin world, and they share a lot of techniques. Uh, okay, so what do we know? What's the history? Okay, so first of all, uh, uh, so barrel camp. I hope I remember that. My police and then board. And this is 28. Okay, so the proof harvest for NCP, NP harvest. Okay, and moment, they have they, they do harness for like more problems for codes, but like the one we care about is they they talk about NCP, okay, and they conjecture that you know well the real business model should also be hard, they could improve it. Okay. And this conjecture was open until like for almost 20 years, and Barney came along. Yeah, and and the input is uh, binary back there. Yeah. Yeah, I think when you hear the NCP queues, it should be maybe over only binary for binary inputs. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's like a reduction for match, like three dimensional match or something. Uh, yeah, so then, yeah, thanks. It's, it's because I, I never remember which ones are because I just want to say very specific you know, choices. But, but yeah. Uh, then Hardy came along in 97 and proved that, and I think here, oh, it's the last point. MVP. Uh, now you know, you know if it's like binary or like, I think it's very close. So like let me just write MVP is MVP. Okay. <laughs> um, and so this is fine. So now you know this is here's actually like open for a very long time. It's getting this exact version, right? And somewhere here, like I think I was about to write, there's uh, Aurora, uh, and Saren. These guys in nineteen three, they proved that the approximate version of NCP is high. Okay. So I think yeah here. Actually, gamma and CPQ is at the heart. And when I write the gamma here, I always think of gamma being the constant. constant. Okay. There's a very, there's actually a very simple reduction to proving this, which is like you take set cover. From set cover, you can get both MP harness of approximate NCP and actually uh, MP harness of approximate CDP, which is the analogous problem for lines. It works for both. Because people like set cover, it's like, Working over the integers or working like not Q, like it won't really make a difference. It's a really simple reduction. Okay. So we know approx we know harness of approximating MCP, we know harness of exact MP. Okay. And not long after, um, so there was Zoomer, uh, Chancho, and Sudan. I think this was 99, the conference version. So they proved that the hardest of what's the And let me say that this is under randomized reductions. Mm -hmm. Is that clear what I mean by this? It's like you, you have a reduction that can like like you can probably like if you have a yes system, you can have to do a yes this is probably ninety nine percent, or perhaps a no this is general this is probably ninety nine percent. Okay, so so we knew this under randomized reductions. Okay, 
And then more recently, uh, a bunch of papers. Um, And, um, a bunch of people uh, managed to get this basically hard missing group through this dimensions. Was this independent or? or uh, yeah, let me, so I'm mentioning all of this, but some of these are like building on top of these orders. Uh, these two, I think, are independent. Um, this one is also like where you get like larger classification factor and you can about the same. Uh, so they get you know, approximate when this is problem is empty hard. Under the transit connections. And, and, and the idea here is basically like there's some sort of like probabilistic construction of some fundamental object here that these guys would like a deterministic construction that's not good enough to make the reduction goes through essentially. And we're going to get to that because I'm going to discuss these reductions. I think it's really good for us. It's very nice. Okay. okay. This gamma is always constant. Sorry. This gamma is always constant. Uh, no, you can even get like uh, the... this classical formula. But this root log n or something like that. But like from here, like I guess you mean your assumption is like NP not equal RP. So this is like, yeah, I guess the important thing here, like, and this, these people care about, right? It's like in these randomized reductions, they have one side there. It's like the issue is, um, what is this? So in the no case, you always get something or something like this. Yes, let, let me let me think. In the no case, yes, yes. In the no case, it always works. I just guessed that. No, that's cool. But it, 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 I think it is what happens. Well, you know, we're gonna do it, and then we can keep it up. But, but yeah, that's that's what happens. Um, okay. So let me do the same thing for lattices. And the storyline is pretty, pretty much the same. It's like maybe different people. Uh, some there are some there's some intersection, but uh, I think it's cute that like it actually goes about upper bounds, you know, for uh, like at root n you start to get the upper bounds, right? Gamma root n or something. Yeah, probably. I just like right now I don't really focus on that. Like pretend like again, gamma for me is like the constant. I'm not gonna go up for that. But yeah, you're right that you have some, some limitations like you said, like gamma is like root 10 and you cannot do it unless mm -hmm. uh, or like we, we pretty much would believe that like we strongly believe that it should be able to do harness against It's an NP intersect 20. Yes. So you can't prove NP harness. Yeah. Um all right. So well you can't unless you know. <laughs> Well, sure. Just... And but then, then the point is, the unless is not sure. really, yeah. Okay, so so we kind of understand, we understand NCP and NP really well, like the NP worlds. Uh, the same thing holds for CDP and SPP. Um, it's for some reason, all cryptography can be interesting. What, sorry? Because for some reason, all cryptography seems to be in NP intersect 20, all non cryptography. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually quite, it's fun as well, because, uh, yeah. Uh, right, so Van Hennen and Owens uh, basically proved, mm -hmm. yeah, so this is like, this thing here was kind of like this, we were then with 78, we were 81. Uh, so, closest metric problem in the L2 norm is at the heart, okay? Conjecture that the short metric problem in the L2 norm is also at the heart. So, but there's no, this two is just a coincidence, no? There's no relation uh, there's between no, the there's two. No, there's no relation, yeah. This is like the alphabet size, it's like more. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just like. I guess the point is that the two there and the two there here, they're like the most important settings, kind of. Or like these are the same that people usually care about, so like binary codes and uh, and the L2 norm, which is like Euclidean distance, right? Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, 
So that, that was the first thing. And then, yeah, conjecture that SBP was also NPR, we improve it. And this was open until I tie and by like 98. We proved that um, yeah. SBP2 is NPR. You know, they, I hope I'm getting this right. Like, I think this. Um, okay. And then, you know, I, let, me, let me also mention that and I always forget this, you know, the same paper here. So this is here. A very important result of like that, right? Sorry? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I mean, there's this very re important result of my time that shows some average case, worst case to average case reduction. Yes. For these problems. I don't think this is, a, it, I don't think this is the same paper. Okay. But, that, but it exists. Yes. Right. There is something showing average case to Right, because you have you have all these things in cryptography where uh, yeah. you know you want to prove average case hardness. Yeah. But all we know are to really yeah, prove that's it. Right. That's really nice. yeah. 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 So you do have some some like the, like the, also all the all the learning there is reduces the worst case short term. Yeah. So again, another average case is worst case reduction. Um, no, no, but you want the reduction in the other direction. You probably mean the other direction. Yeah, the worst case, the average case. Yeah. 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 You want the reduction that makes sense. So, <laughs> yeah. So you want to prove that your average case problem is hard, as hard as the worst right. case. Right. Right. Um, so I'm saying that these guys here, so Aurora, the line, and Stern, is really, I mean, the same reduction that gets you a hardness of approximating uh, NCP, it also gets you hardness of approximating. Uh, okay. There's some approximation loss in this reduction. Sorry? But this reduction incur incurs some approximation loss. So it's hard to approximate a uh, set cover, like unique set cover. That's, we just inherit this thing. No, no, I, yeah, I don't mean that one. I'm oh, still stuck the, with the other one. Yeah. Well, which, which one? This worst case to average case reduction. Oh. You can only prove that you can approximate in the worst case. Yes. This yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 like, yeah, so these things, like, you reduce to, like, approximate, say, SDP, like, show the factor. Right. It's always and the factor, right. And the factor is, like, n to the something. Yes. 1.5, which yeah. is like what you need for, for right. like uh, Latin space crypto. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. All right. So, and then there was like a bunch of works that, uh, so you have yeah. what's the status now? You have NP harness of exact SVP, you have NP harness of approximate CVP, by releasing NP harness of approximate SVP, and a bunch of works. Dangerous. Um, so there was Michancho, um, like 2000, and it's like the like you know these two things they kind of like they share ideas like proving you know hardness of approximating SVP. Basically, the ideas are similar to the ideas used with like hardness of approximating. You know, this is probably like Michancho and thought two. Uh, and this thing, Kai, and I want to say, yeah, so, yeah, it's 98, so more, two, um, maybe more, but three. Right there. So, like the series of work getting like harness for progressively long term approximation factors for SPP. Okay, so I presume ending in this two to the log n to the one minus. Yeah. Like they're trying to like push it all the way to the limits. Like they started to like, like no, this work here gets to like approximation factor that is like one plus one over column. So it's like decaying, but it's approaching one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this one here got you constant. This uh, call then managed to get this to like basically any, any constant. like any constant like above that. Uh, and, and then like this is just like pushing it like to the, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so let me just say that it's like under randomized reactions, 
And unlike in the coding world, we don't know how to get rid of this. Okay, so we a problem. I'm just taking what of people saw that this is really a problem. It's just like, uh, I'll show uh, where it is. And we've done that as you can too. Okay, help you more. Um, under uh, and so we, we do have reductions. So originally, the reductions had like two sided error that were managed to make it like one sided. So we changed it like one sided. Um, and we still don't know to do it in this. Thing. So, and, and really, the ideas are very similar to the coding world. It's like it's the kind of the same combinatorial object, but you, like you just, it's a lattice instead of the code. You know, we don't come so what kind of oh, okay okay the proof uses something about the distribution uh when the, 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 the yeah no i mean the proof and we're going to go like you look at the proof gonna, and just some some stuff and you so we're going to sample something yeah in that case we sample like you mean you have a code okay and then you're going to sample like a point in your vector space and you want this point to have certain nice properties then you can put like sample that random but if you sample from like a specific distribution, it's going to work. Okay. But then you need to, you're, if you want to get rid of this randomness, you kind of need to like deterministically construct this point, right? And this is what these guys do. Mm -hmm. uh, but you still don't know how to do exactly that. So choosing the lattice point or like choosing the, the, this point correctly in the lattice. So you need a hitting set for some property. You know what the property is, but you don't know how to hit it. Yes. Something like this? Yes, yes, yes. So if you can solve it, that's uh, it would be very very interesting. Um, but, you know, there's a spot that line. So. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> like we have until seven. I have to go for dinner after. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right. So so, so I think the main takeaway here is that yeah, we do understand these things quite well, except for this open problem there, which I think is very interesting. Maybe a few students, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, all right. So, so this is really all I wanted to say about the empty hardness. So let's go into the track hardness. Um, can I can I raise for the time? So So I can tell you a bit about just the parameterized parameters, but what exactly are we trying to do? Um, parameterized parameters. And I'm going to, yeah, let me, maybe the best way to talk about this is to kind of, um, yeah, let me, let me start with an example. Okay, so, so you know, you can't like, you know, you prove any hardness of some problem. I mean, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's like hard in practice, right? Because maybe, you know, certain instances that do show up in practice, they're easy, right? So, I mean, stupid example, but it does kind of, uh, I think it's in the starting point, like, you know, if you look at like SAT, right? Look at like, like trying to, 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 to decide some formula about the trial. If you tell me that like, if the number of constants is fixed, like, okay. Okay. I can do promise to. Like, you know, like all the instances that show up, that push up in my, in this problem, all the problems are going to have at most k variables. Number of variables, not constants. Sorry? You wrote number of constants, but you mean number oh, of yeah. variables. <laughs> yeah, number of variables. Yeah. So, number of variables is like k. And think of k as like a constant. <laughs> okay. sure. uh, so, there is an algorithm. Okay, there's a stupid algorithm that is like root force, right? So then we can solve uh, in time, like uh, due to the k volume, right? The root force of like all variables times in check, right? Uh, so this means that like if k is small, then it is like pretty fast, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that like, you know, basically if you parameterize satisfiability by like number of variables, the problem is easy. Okay. 
Now you can ask, you know, is this a reasonable parameterization? Right? There are there may be several parameterizations for your problem, right? So maybe to parameterize by like number of like literals in the clause, and it's not easy anymore, right? So really the hardness depends on the parameterization. Uh, and you can talk about like other protocols is also happening, like like vertex stuff, right? It's like one of these canonical ones, like you know. You say you know, you have K vertex cover, and like I write the K there to make the parameter kind of explicit. So, like, so your parameter is like the size of the cover. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you promised that like the, the size of the cover you're looking for is K, then you also have not with the value times this, right? And to the K. Mm -hmm. Okay, where well, well, I'm not saying what n is, but I guess you understand what n is. And it's like, oh, I see. So that's the non obvious one. Yes. Hmm? Or this is a good question. What was the vertex cover for them? So, vertex cover is you need to um, give me a set of uh, well, vertices, right? You cover all the edges. You, that touch every edge. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Should, should that be anxious there? Sorry? Should the time be anxious there or do you need to do it there following? Uh, no, I think you can do it to do it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can do it. It's one of these that's, 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 that's not real good in the country. Right? Because, like, um, let me, okay, so let me tell you, like, if you see a time it's... like this, so what we call, we call this, like, fixed parameter tractable. Okay, so it's like if you fix this parameter, right? So this k, then all of a sudden your problem is easy. Okay, because why you can do the cost of this and so Okay. So parameterize complexity or like parameterized hardness is basically trying to rule out that these algorithms exist for your problem, where you know you need some some parameterization, right? And I think for us. What makes sense, like in our case, is like what is the parameter of interest for our problems? It's really the distance bound, the k, right? So, so uh, really, what what we'd like to say is like we'd like to say, well, there are no algorithms running in time, say t of k times all the n, okay? Where say n is like the dimension of your code, and k is the distance bound, and t could be any function. So things like the power of exponentials, right? We want to do a lot of this, okay? So really trying to try to talk about like working with this. Um, so let me make here like a dictionary too. Um, so yeah, so let me let me compare this with that hardness. So so there's the parameterized world. The, I'm going to call it like uh, NP world, uh, like these are not non like unparameterized problems. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to say, okay, you know, here you have a bunch of things that are like standard, right? You have like you have E, right? So like all all the time. time. You have NP, which is like non control kind of just <laughs> like, But yes, you have T and NP, right? And then you have things like you know NP complete, right? This is like what the canonical problem is, like you know, uh, like you could define like or maybe let's not put NP complete, but like NP hardness. Okay, well, NP hardness is really like there is a reduction from sets to your problem, right? Two sets. There is a space to your problem five. Um, and then what you have more, well, I'm going to figure it out as I write as I yeah, and then, and then you have like what's your reduction it's like you know, I would say uh, I'll just say that of course, like what's the one we do with conjecture is the key and then reductions. Uh, has to run in time. This is what happens in the end. 
and Q world, parallelized world, well, you don't have P, you have FPT, which stands for at least parameter tractable. It's like all parameter tractable where you can solve that in time. So this is like solvable in time or decidable. Okay, where n is the input size for your uh, thing, and think of the k parameters like not being part of your input. It's like this. Okay. Uh, you have something called w one. I won't define this. I guess we will figure it's like I don't know the definition. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. And then you have like. Uh, w1 harness, okay, and for me, W1, like how, you, how can you define W1 harness? But it's really just what is the economic problem that is really hard, okay? It's um, click, okay, click, okay, click, okay, so uh, click, which is like the click problem parameterized by the size of the click, uh, reduces to five, okay. And pi now here is like a a uh, parameter problem. Okay. So I need to tell you what it means to like reduce. It's like the, the notion of reduction is a bit uh, different. Okay. So the the, the wide degree of conjecture is that f t is not equal to w one. Okay. So if you prove basically if you prove w one hardness, then you essentially rule out algorithms at this point. Real problem. Okay. So like even with that parameter things will be easy. Um, and then you have an F, what's called a reduction. So this is really just like a reduction, like you're used to. So you take like um, okay. So let's say you're trying to reduce a problem, a parameterized problem, like pi k is okay. like pi pi k prime. Okay. So the condition, the condition is that well, you know, this runs. In time, like t of k times polyam. I mean, usually it just runs in time to the normal mm. um, And the important thing here is like this parameter is like you can go from k to k prime, so you can change it. But it's never if this k prime will only be a function of this statement. Or at least this upper bounded by a function of. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. So this part really all depends on this. So this is really just a special time, a special, a special type of, of reduction. Okay. And instead of starting from like three set, you start. With okay. Everything clear? Yeah. We saw the all, I guess, all the race and, and, and then we got like what's the story in the public world. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, there are like four books about this as well. Right? Stung and Fellows books. Uh, but really, like all, like this is really all we need to kind of understand. Um, so yeah, I'll race. That's fine. So we just like mentioned here what we know about this problem in the Fellows right world. So for coding, uh, for a long time, we didn't know much. So there was this thing by Downey, Gallows. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so maybe let me let me say like, okay, so when I parameterize, I have like um, NCP and NDP are parameterized by the distance bound. Okay, right? So treat that as like constant. You're just trying to see whether your code is like distance k or not, or k is not 10. Okay. 
and you're trying to make the runtime of your algorithm multiply like this or up to a larger Um okay, so let's see now we and Okay, so they will basically the first time to go to the try to have these problems. And they show that um, basically um, I think we should have the MCP for binary codes is that we want to. The exact version of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and, 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 and there's this book by Donnie and Fellows, okay, from around the same time where they call uh, the W1 hardness of the new distance problem for binary code, just the exact version. Uh, one of the most infamous problems, most infamous problems. In So clearly people talk about this is like really nice, really important. Really hard problem like showing W1 hardness or uh, doing this problem uh, for binary codes. <laughs> okay. And um, so, does this W1 hardness work? Do you just like look at the reductions that are known and it turns out that is that how it happens? Yeah. So, I mean, we can, we can let's think a bit about this, right? Uh, so, yeah. So, I guess the natural thing is like when we think about this, like, okay, we know we kind of know. First of all, you have a problem, kind of, which is like, well, let's ignore it for now, which is like, okay, we know that NCP is still one part for binary codes, but only the exact version. That's one project. Okay. So you need the approximate version to be the one part because the way you prove hardness for this problem, even for the exact version, you need to start from the approximate version of the US code. Oh, I see. Okay. But let's let's ignore that and say, well, let's pretend I have that. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know you can push the techniques to get approximation. Um, even then, you, know, you need to find one reduction that is FTT, right? Your reduction to be like this relative traffic. You start this session. No, but I, I'm, I think you're one step ahead of me. So, what I was asking was this this reduction, NCP2, that yeah. shows that NCP2 is W1 hard. Yeah. Does it work just by taking the previous reduction that shows that it's NP hard? No, I mean, no, because I have this the reduction I know, which is from set cover, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, set cover is not that we want to hire. I see. Yeah. Okay. Which is annoying. It actually does some. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to show up. Okay. Um. So, yeah, sorry for, for jumping ahead. No, no. And now, yeah, and now you're asking. Okay. Kind of like, I think the natural thing is like, when we look at the problem like this, you kind of think, like, uh, you know, is there anything that already works uh, out there, right? Uh, and I think now is a good time to talk about this. Uh, okay, so, so you know, we can think, right? What, what if you want the reduction from say, um, so, um, let's say you have maybe let's put in another color. Um, let me write the blue still. So let's say I want to reduce from um, gamma MCP2 to MVP2, okay? So I want to reduce from your school words problem. And then it goes to like, this is this problem, okay? So, okay, so you give me an instance of MCP, okay? So you give me the generator matrix, the targets and the distance found, right? And what do I need to get? Is like I need to get some like G prime and K prime such that you know, just by looking at the distance of this code, 
and we see if it's larger than or equal to, but, you know, larger or smaller than a prime, I can kind of decide if there's something close to it. Okay. So I, I think the, usually like the obvious thing to try, and you can very stuck with trying this, is just like, okay, I'm going to take my matrix G, and I'm just going to add T as a row, as a, as a call. And I'm just going to augment this and do this. Seems natural, right? And now you can ask, you know, well, uh, is it true that, like, you know, if there's a, well, let's let's look at the yes and no case, right? Let's see what happens. Um, if you take the yes case, um, then you know that uh, there is an X, right? There is a code where it is close to T. So it seems like we're fine because I think X minus one. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you just go take I'm gonna call it X prime, and then you really just X and then carry on. Okay. Why? Because well, I just take G prime X prime. It is really just so that the yes case is fine, but if you go to the yes case, then if you look at the no case, and yeah, it's not so good. Okay, and this is not going to work. Why? Well, because you can just not take the target vector at all, right? Uh, okay. So the no case, it's like all you need in the no case, it should be the fact which. It should happen that your G prime, the code generated by G prime, does not have short vectors, right? Uh, and it is true that, like, if you take the last column as part of your linear combination, it 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 will be it, it won't be a small it won't be a short vector, right? So the problem is that so if X prime is like X zero. Okay. So I just don't, I, I ignore the last column, right? Then, you know, this is really just, okay, so I'm really just looking at the zero norm or the minimum weight of my original code. Right, and the fact that my original code has like no code words around the target doesn't really mean that it doesn't have any code words around the origin, right? So we kind of need a way of like boosting the minimum distance of our original code, right, without kind of like ruining the yes case where it works really well. Right. Yeah, also, I mean, even if you include the T, you could include it twice or three times. That's fine because, well, it's like a, a, a because it's a code. It, it's a it's a field, right? So you can just like multiply by the inverse, which is something you cannot do here. I see. Uh, that's why it's useful to have this multiple thing in the CD, the harness of the CD. And that doesn't change the hemming distance. Okay, yeah, great. Okay, so so clearly, like this doesn't work as is. I think it's a good starting point because the yes case does work, and we do understand why the no case doesn't. Okay, so so all you have to do is like make sure that that like G cannot have small vectors unless you include T, something like this. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, one thing you can try is like, well, I know I just want to boost the this right here. This this fails because the minimum distance of my of the code spanned by G is just bad, right? So let me just like artificially just bump it up. Right, okay. that's some coordinates. How can I do that? I can just like, yeah, I can just like add some coordinates. I'm gonna go like, I'm gonna add some G tilde. Right. Okay. I have to add something here, but call it S. Uh, and G tilde, this comes, this is a, so the code spent by this has large distance, okay? Same. Okay. This is D that's like larger, much larger than like gamma times k, which is like your bound for the no case. Okay. 
So this is also this is natural, right? Just like plug in a high distance of health. And now you say, well, but S must be in it somehow. Sorry? S must be in it or something. Like yeah, I could so cancel this large distance. What's gonna happen? Yeah, so 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 in the no case, oh. now this vector, like you cannot like break the reduction with these vectors, right? Because if you just take vectors like F zero, so like if you ignore this column. You're gonna get you're gonna pay the distance of this code. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um so in that sense, you're fine. Okay. Or like pretend that this would be like zero. Okay. Like you're always gonna pay the distance. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I feel like maybe put S here because I mean, you could choose this to be something and maybe it's useful to do choose it to be some mm -hmm. to it. Okay. But now if you look at the yes case, so the, the no case now kind of works, mm -hmm. but the yes case now it doesn't really work anymore because what you'd like to say is that, well, you know, I know there's an X such that the code word like G of G times X is supposed to be, right? Mm -hmm. But then I also need that G tilde times X. Is close to F. I need these two things to work to, yeah. to, to make sense, like to be satisfied simultaneously. And as it stands, I have no way of doing this. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I have no control over this code. I do have control over this. I don't have control over this. Mm -hmm. So I suppose suppose you knew that the Hamming weight of X somehow was going to be I don't know n by two for mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. right? Then you could maybe you know, like S would be like minus N by two and then G tilde would just be ones or something, but large multiply by something. G um, tilde we would be one times. How multiply by two? Because I mean, you know, like you're still working in the fields that's like FQ, Q is like a constant. I mean, even here, like we're just doing binary. Okay. So like, this all like zero one. Okay. Matrices. I was thinking of distance over lattice. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, this is not, I mean, it's, it's not obvious like how you get around this. I mean, it, otherwise, I guess you, would, you wouldn't be necessarily like a diverse thing. So, so let me tell you about how uh, the, the Doomer reduction shows to that reduction work. So, it is like the starting point for it, okay? And let me, it's what we need to do is the following. So, I, I really, like you said, like, you agree, really, like, really just have to ensure that, like, I can find. Some sort of message that, like, in, in both here and here, it kind of encodes to something that's like close to these targets. Okay, this, this is what I need to do. Then you make sure that, like, both here and here, it happens at the same time. Okay, so what you do is like, let me just um, increase this a bit, and I'm gonna provide something, and maybe it won't make sense, but like, let me just, okay, so I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna say, well, so this didn't change, but this changed. But what I'm doing is I'm gonna I'm putting G tilde here and here. Okay, so what happens? Like I get X, I encode it with the same code. Okay. And then I have this linear transformation. Okay, this another matrix that's gonna map things from who is this? I'm gonna explain here. So E is really just some linear transformation that maps from. So I'm going to call them till the, the, the length of the covers or the G till the code. Okay. So, and I'm going to say that these maps, I mean, I'm just writing things so that it really makes sense for what I'm writing there. Okay. Because what happens here is that. You think X. So is that a product or is that an append? Are you no, appending? No, it's a product. Product like matrix. So like matrix, matrix, matrix just, mm -hmm. So you're, you're composing linear maps, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So, and I'm just writing there the parameters so that it fits into here. So like, if you get X, mm -hmm. you encode it with G tilde, so you get something of that N tilde. And then, if you want to multiply it by G in the end, you need to transform it into a vector of size N, of that N. Okay. So there's this in the map, and what I would like to do is kind of make sure that, okay, so what do I need? I need that, like, when I find something here, when I put, so when, 
Okay, what I need is this. If if the code word, if the encoding of X according to G tilde is close to S, which is this guy here, okay. If this is small, okay. So what I need is I need to like have this transformation send me to something to another message that is going to be small in your gene. And I, we can go over this carefully. But like, so if this is small, then Sorry? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, what else? It should be. Okay. So I need to be able to say, well, you know, I can find like, um, I can find like the guy that I can find the cohort of this code called like C tilde. I can find the cohort of C tilde that is close to S. Okay. And uh, I can then, and, and which can be like mapped uh, with this in your map to <coughs> something that encodes to a cohort that's close to C. Then why do you need the top matrix at all? Can't you just have G tilde S? No, because then you need to say, well, you know, if 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 this guy is a yes instance of NCP, then so the thing is that now we're dealing with the yes case, right? This is the case that's kind of bothering us now. Like this, this is from the analysis of the previous one. It's like so. The G prime, right? So, so let's say that GTK is a yes system. So there is a, there is some Z, okay? So that G times Z is close to the target, okay? And I can also maybe like wishful thinking, but like I'm going to choose G tilde such that I can find things close to the target. Yes, okay. But I want to make sure that I'm going to like do both at the same time. Okay, so what I, what I want to do is kind of say, well, I'm going to put here a linear map that translates code words of C tilde into like code words of C in a way that like when they're close to S, when code words of C tilde are close to S, code words of C are close to T. The corresponding code word of C is close to T. Okay. Yeah, but I, I, again, I, I don't see why I need the GT G tilde, right? Because so what, what, like, what do you have here then? So in the no case, um so you, you mean just like this? Yeah, just have the G tilde. No, no, no. Just erase the top. Oh, so so you just say like this goes. Yeah, this it's not necessary. But right? it's independent of your NC instance, right? Yeah, no, but, yeah. no so the G tilde. The G tilde to be like any G tilde that has large distance. That's your definition of G tilde. Right now. Right. But like right. G tilde is like big independently of the G. Okay. Well, so G tilde is agnostic to G. It doesn't know the other code. And you're choosing it for the no cases. So yeah, I'm just going by what you just wrote there. And, and right? If I if I can find something close to it. Yes. Right. So you know, so so I can look at the minimum distance of G tilde S, this code, right? Yes. If I don't include S, then that's just the minimum distance of G tilde, which is large. Yes. Right. So, so like maybe I but if include I, S and then like so but if I include S, then and I and it turns out that this distance is small, mm -hmm. then there will be exist some Z which shows that the distance 
Yeah. Well, the, the Z yeah. has a specific format, right? It's like you're mapping. Like no, but, I, but it yeah. doesn't matter because if I apply G to Z, I will be close to T. So the distance will be small. Yeah. The distance of the yeah. code of uh, G uh, to T will be small. No, it's not a problem. No, I, no. I, 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 the way it's created. Um, I can replace this. No, because I don't think it's. I don't. I don't see any problem. I'm just saying. Then I don't need. I don't understand why you need the top block of rows, right? Take the no case. Suppose that every that everything is far from uh, t. Everything in G is far from t. So if everything in G is far from t, then I cannot find something in G tilde which is close to s. Yeah, but then you're because if I could, I would be close. No, 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 it's far. So this is the no case, right? Everything is everything in G is far from t. That's the no case. Then. Um, then I claim that uh, I, I don't have, I, I claim that the minimum vector is large just for G tilde S, just for that code, mm -hmm. right? Because if I don't include S, that's the minimum distance of G tilde. Yes. And if I do include that. S, right? And if it turns out that now with, with a one on the S column, I get something which has small distance, that just means that G tilde X minus S is small, but then that implies, right? So, but then the, the other distance would be small and it's not by some so in the no case it works. Okay, so let's okay. let's 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 write it down. Okay. So so say in the no case, but let's say you forget about the distance that exists. Right? Yeah, exactly. Then you're saying, well, in the know, no case, the, the distance case. will be large, and in the yes case, the distance will be small. The, sorry, the, well, in the no case, the small me, what's stopping me from saying, okay, so like I said, this is like the no case is all cohorts of this code are. Or far from T, yes. Yeah. So why? What's guaranteeing me that, like, when you're saying that, well, this code is also far from this? Yes, because if it's not, then the other one wouldn't be. I mean, invert that sentence, like the. Yeah, but I mean, the thing here that's kind of like making the connection between the two, okay, implicitly, is this linear map? No, no, but I'm just saying if that linear map exists, the image of your reduction doesn't have to include the top block. I don't see why. That's all I'm saying. Just look at your reduction, take G tilde S, that's his zero. Right? Or am I wrong? Okay. Wait. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. There's one thing that well, you, might... need, you need to use the map somehow, right? But you're using it in the sentence. Um... Yes. So why? Okay. So... No, but, I, but I'm assuming that G tilde will depend on G and T and T. No, G tilde does not. But in this case, it should. But G then, something, G but then something, something is wrong because no, no, but it, it is not. That's the point. It is oh, then I don't see that the, the map T does depend on G and on G T. Like this, is, but it, you just need existence. So I need to find it. But like, let's, let's kind of forget about this. Maybe let's find. It. I'm not okay. Um, let me, let me just take the, the look at that sentence. It says that if S is close to G tilde. Yes. Then, then when I map that code word, then T is close to G. That's a consequence. Look, I'm just taking this. Sentence. If S is close to G tilde, then T is close to G. Well, that's uh, if that's I'm just ignoring yes, the middle yes, part. That, no, right? that, that is true. Like it's like okay, but like you need to find yes, that, that, that is like that's true, right. Okay, so so let me let me sorry, I think then maybe this is like uh no, this is fine. Um but then but I, I I'm not seeing how how what's the issue here. Because like okay, so I, I, I just need to work back to ensure that like if I find a code word of C tilde. Mm -hmm. That is close to S. Mm -hmm. Okay. That same code word, when mapped according to this linear map, gets you a code word of C that is close to T. Okay. Okay, let me let me let me tell you why. Okay, why why does that work? Well, because if it's I mean, yeah, isn't assuming that it is a yes case? Yes. So let's try to prove it. In the in the yes case, you have to prove that there's the smallest uh, code I mean, word. The problem here is like the way I trace this. Okay, so let me let me let me erase this and let me trace it maybe in some other way. Okay. So I have this linear map, 
what I would like to say is the following, okay, maybe a bit more general, but I would like to, to be able to say that like I can like select something, okay, I, I will select some uh, I don't know which by the way, like I would select some W, W here to here. And I want that like uh, I would say like if it's if it is a yes case. Okay, if if G and K like if P is close to P, okay, mm -hmm. then there is a W that I can put here that will work in the sense that both of this, or both this, this will be close to this, and this will be close to this. That implies in particular that S is close to G prime. Ah, but that's if that's the difference. That's the other, right? That's the other direction somehow. So, so what I maybe I mean I, I think I, maybe you flip the direction say that like that like. Okay, let me let me put it this way. What I really want is I want to be able to say that like I can get this. So um, how would I say? Let me just go ahead and tell you like what I want from T. Okay, and I would like T to be over. Okay, so here's this is S. Okay, here's a ball around S. Okay. It has some radius. I don't care right now what is the radius. Okay. The thing that this radius is like um, smaller than the distance of your coats uh, C to a level. Okay. And this thing here has like many coats and stuff. Okay. Potentially. This red dots are the covers of C to okay. And I want this map, I want to choose the map such that okay. I'm going to map from this wall or from the covers in this wall to F to N. And I want this to be subjective. So I'm going to this to be subjective on this, and now let me explain. So, so C tilde is the code span by G tilde. Okay. This is the ball of radius alpha times Z around S. So you look at the covers, you look at the red dots, which are exactly the covers in this ball. And I want this in your map. To be surjective on this ball. Like I would say, like it's surjective, you mean that it has a full image, even if you only take the code words. Yes. Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And why does it work? Okay. Well, why, that's, why? Yeah, then it works. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It works. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah. I was being too confusing with like I think the, I think there was the was it, wasn't that wrong direction? I think the motor corners went in the wrong went in the wrong direction. Okay. So sorry about that. But like the idea is you want to choose the linear map. So that you can choose something, you can always choose something that's like small here and then small here. Okay. So, so you want it to have large distance, large, large distance, but yet there should be some string S. And if you take a small ball around S, it still has enough code words that you can map. Yeah. Every, so of course, maybe the, this is an extra requirement on your code G tilde, right? Like not every code has like you need to choose G tilde and S such that this ball has. Sufficiently many cohorts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, let me. I'll, I'll get to that. So, so the yes case. Yeah. So what happens is that. Uh, so there is. Yes, there is x. Yeah. There is x such that z times g times x minus t is small. Okay. So. Also, the pre image of X. Yeah, yeah exactly. There is kind of like uh, some W in, you know, um, there is some W such that, you know, I, you know, so what's going to happen is that this thing here, T times 
G tilde W max. G tilde W is close to S. G tilde W is close to S. And W max. G tilde Just by predicting, right? Okay. I'm assuming that this happens. This is again wishful thinking. We haven't constructed it. Um, so, so this diagnosis. Yes, you can. K make, plus alpha D or something. Yeah, this? so we take every time to do like W minus one. You know, we're looking at this. This is at most uh, K plus. Right. So this is your new k Take that. Makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, and for the low case, um, well, that's easy because what can happen is that either you don't include the last column and you pay the distance of g tilde, or you put the last column and you pay the distance of c. We must always pay the distance of C, yes. Okay. Yeah, so either we got oh right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We always pay the distance of C because I mean in the end you get you get something, right? Okay, Just well, by I, the first one. The first three so now we turn back to result this format like that you beta is like the last column. Like okay, mm -hmm. so we, if beta is zero, then then we go. yeah, then this happens. And if it equals one, which means like you take you take that thing, so I'm just gonna say like equals minus one. Okay, this is, again we don't lost general to just if it's not just minus one. Uh, then well just on the first few columns you pay the distance to t, right? Yeah. Because the first word to t, all right, that's just one. Yeah. 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 So you're the distance of c. Yeah, you got something here. Let's see. Okay, so this works. Modulo yeah. constructing right. that thing. Okay, so actually, like constructing this, like the linear map. Oh, alpha D has to be less than one minus gamma K or something. Yeah, there's there's some concern to like the gap. So, like the idea is like you're gonna choose the gap when your MC needs to like super large. That's going to give you like a much smaller gap from the ramp you can use. Um, and then you can have to try that. Uh, I will get to that. But, okay. But but so uh, let me just say that constructing this surjective in the map is not hard. Okay. So it's like as long as there are like sufficiently many cohorts, you can do this. Like a random map? What? Yeah, like left over ash. I'm sure if you know what is left over ash. Leftover hash limit. Hash limit. It's about extra. Like, yeah, I mean, but basically the idea, actually, I'm not sure if the parameter is true, but I just say, like, if you have a large set, uh, if you sample a random, like, linear map, okay, okay. like, even yeah. like, yeah, mm -hmm. this is going to be like subjective. Mm -hmm. Okay, so long as you have sufficiently many groups. And I won't get into like how many, but. Yeah. Um... Okay, but like a random linear map should work, and that's fine because you can use randomness. Okay, the problem is you need to ensure that, like, you pick your codes, your G tool, and your ads, such that this happens. Okay, um, <coughs> wait, but alpha D must be at least what, uh, so N alpha, or uh, I'll also hear you know about alpha like or N by two or alpha is smaller than one. Okay. But also not much smaller than T. Okay. It also needs to be larger than half, right? Because if you have half, then there are no mm -hmm. points. Or at least there's at most one. But yeah. Just by triangle in the No, but D needs to be like N or something. That's a good yeah, yeah. We're gonna get that's that's where I wanted to get to, basically. 
So uh, we're going, we're doing, we're doing the PMS reduction. I'm just, I'm just, first of all, I'm doing it because there are some. I mean, I'm that, just saying you need two to the n words or q, yeah, to, q to the n. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. So I'm, I'm going to generally just say, uh, that, yeah, you need, you need these objects called the local events code. Okay. This is really the part that is, uh, I guess, non trivial here, which is just like this d tilde s. Okay. And it is this property that one, like, uh, at large distance. And yeah, distance. large distance. And large. Um... But you have this, you're like, you have many holders around the point. So, like, so this is like at least, say, D, and I'm going to take D to be double time scale. Okay, that's just because it's the setting, the parameter setting that works, but I don't focus too much on it. It's like D is large. Okay. Uh, but uh, if I look at, you know, this, this, this thing here, so if I look at uh, C tilde intersect evolve around S, okay, where alpha again is like the constant, like think about alpha is like 0 0.9, okay? So you take oh, yeah. a slightly yeah. smaller ball and ah. you put it around the S. I see. And this is going to be like N. And N needs to be large. And like you're saying, N needs to be large enough so that we have this map. Okay. So so this is actually so That's we're going to use this like uh, the results that we're going to talk about. They're, they're going to use local events, but we're going to use local events. Um, mm. But like you're saying, like this has no hope of being. Yeah. Uh, it's very much practical because why? Well, because I need to have sufficiently many coders here just to count an argument so that this is surjective. So you need at least two to the n coders in this thing, right? Mm -hmm. So your D needs to grow with your with your with the dimension of the code. Okay, that is bad mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. our pay prime depends on D. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so that doesn't work. Okay, so I mean, this works in the for empty hardness. Okay, it does not work for W1 hardness, even if we had W1 hardness in the box of the which we do need for this. Mm -hmm. okay. Because, you know, there's going to be this gap that we can kind of survive. Like, we, we pay this now, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Any questions or anything? That map is asking for, I mean, there needs to be a subspace of dimension and sitting inside that block. I think I said, I yeah, think. basically, I mean, I mean, it doesn't, there, there doesn't need to be a subspace, so, right? It could be a subspace of basic set. But like, it's it just like the, like this, the guarantee that you have here, like, is very easy to set. Like, like I was saying, uh, any large enough set. Will have this this linear map. You can you can like 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 Bruno was saying you can just assemble a random map and it's going to work. You have probability. No, oh, you're not preserving any structure between that. No, you no you no you're not you're not because you don't care. Like you could say, well, maybe if I want to find things, so like if you have more if you want more structure, maybe you couldn't do it as easily. But like if you really just want to say there exists something, or like oh, well, I need to assemble it efficiently, right? But then I just need to look at high probability. It's fine. Does that make sense? Sorry, I got a bit distracted. No, 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 no. I was just saying, like, really just need to tap over that. And that's pretty fine. <laughs> um, of course, like, when you want to make this deterministic, right? Either, well, you either need another reduction or you need to find, like, a deterministic way of constructing this thing, right? So that's uh, tough. But, like, here we just care about randomness. We just, we, we, we are fine with using randomness, right? Like all the reduction I'm going to discuss, they're going to be randomized. And again, people can probably just like, so for example, in the, in the, in the parameterized world, like we don't have hardness of coding under deterministic reductions, although we do have that uh, for um, in the in the NP world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So this strategy, which is somehow natural, doesn't work. It's nice. It's a nice idea. It's very nice. Okay. So why don't you just say uh, that you know, here, this is your that like 
Uh, okay, so this doesn't work. So they didn't like we need to some kind of like some new ideas. Okay, yeah, repeat Z again, right? Yeah, Z I'm just gonna... Okay, so can, can actually like people actually thought that like it was like beautiful work getting rid of this They're very recently. Uh so uh Bhattacharya um, angry, Michelle, my Marks, um, it was twenty twenty one today. So they basically just they did this all almost everything. Emphasis on the office. Because otherwise all those differences. Um so, so basically they kind of like the infinite open world that was open because the only one hard is so they exact and they kind of they took care of that. Okay, so they did the only one hard is um Approximate MVP for binary nodes. They also did, by the way, just approximate NCP for arbitrary cubic nodes. But for MVP, they, I mean, that was like the open problem. But they managed to do this. Okay. Um, and when we also mentioned that they also did, um, they also got results where. Uh, lattices, okay. Um, but maybe I'll we will get into that um, in a bit, okay. But they got this result because, okay. So they want hardness of approximate NCP, and then they use this approximate NCP result to get the result for approximate MDP for binary codes, okay. And of course they cannot use the binary potential spread reduction, so they have to find something else, and that's why it only works for binary codes. Okay, so they have they have some different notion of like what is a local they don't use local identity, they do something that's a bit weirder. They don't really use this type of thing because why you don't need to that anymore? So you need something else. Okay, so they got this. And this is like amazing that they got this. Okay. But uh you know, this thing here. And like, why can't you get the Q, right? So it's kind of not natural that you cannot just get Q because every other reduction that you have, you just work for every field side, for every field side. Right? So why, why did you, okay? So the reason kind of high level why this doesn't work beyond by the the code is that kind of the, the object that they are using, which is not the locally best code, um, it needs to be basically a not remote code, okay? In terms of like, Redundancy or like code dimension. So it needs to be like, you know, you fix the distance, but you tell me, I want to code the distance 10, and it needs to be like the absolute best code uh, with, with that distance. Okay? The problem is, we really only know how to construct these codes, even like we ran on this uh, for uh, the binary element. It's like BCH codes achieve that. Okay? Um, so, so that's the problem they have. It's like kind of like luckily we know how to do it for the binary field. Okay. So here's the reduction, but we don't know how to do it. It's a very hard problem for like uh fieldable larger size. Okay, so if you have this code, what will the reduction work? Okay, I think it's like, but you can also try to do something more unified, something simple, okay? And that's what we did. So let me erase this because we're not going to use this either because this doesn't work. Um so, but only here the notion of a local dense code because we are going to use it. And okay, so when you look at something like this, it's like okay, you know, the 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 usual reduction for codes doesn't work. Uh, people tried something, they got, they got a hardness for binary codes. 
So, like, is there any reduction for like lattices that is by default the experimental factor? Okay. And maybe, you know, maybe it's a first. Okay. So, there's like, there's this reduction. It's actually beautiful for by a uh, super plot. He has this uh, reduction for lattices and this data reduction applied to those. Okay. That's what we do. Okay, mm. take the reduction as is. Okay, okay, not as is because it's for lattices, so just like adapt it. Okay, um, and like it's not like okay, so first of all, I have a few comments. Like, this is like not like really interesting. It's like, um, two things one is this paper did use this reduction for lattices, so like when you're proving W1 hardness over the lattice problem, they know that this reduction is at PT. Okay, but they only use it for lattices. Um, second is that um, this is actually like uh, if you look at it, if you look very carefully on Moodle, you'll find like some very, 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 very old lecture notes by Subash from like Georgia Tech, where he does do club like mm -hmm. interaction for kills, so like in the binary groups. Okay, but we do it for like larger kills and stuff like that. But like the idea is really the same as the lattice. It's like these things transfer. Okay, so like every reaction that works for lattices, most of the time will work for code, which is some, some minor modification. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so let me tell you what it is, and it also uses locally dense codes. Okay, um, and I do think that presenting it for codes is much nicer than presenting it for lattices because of something that I haven't mentioned yet, which is that gap implementation for like approximation and modification for codes is much easier than for lattices. Um, okay, so how does it work? Is that like you give me a? Are you going to give it for for codes directly or yeah, for codes? Yeah, okay. it's much cleaner, I think, because like if you go okay, if you go read uh, Hans paper, uh, his reduction is like not very clean because he needs to like add a lot of like technicalities so that in the end, so you better get and uh, so in the lattice world, you reduce some code factor to short factor. Okay, and you get short spectrum with like a gap, but like small, like say, it's like the approximation factor is like 1.0. Okay, example. <laughs> but you'd like to basically amplify this to like something like right? And uh, in the coding world, that's very easy because what you do is you take, okay, you have one instance, you have copies of like two copies of instances. If you take the tensor product of two points, um, the minimum distance multiplies. Okay, so what you do is just do this several times to gather, mm -hmm. but it is not true that if you take the tensor product of two lattices, that the norm of the shortest factor also multiplies. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's terrible. So you need to like massage your reduction to make it work. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. So, okay. mm -hmm. so in the coding world, much simpler because you don't have to worry about that. Like you get a gap, you're fine. You get it, you get into like any concept. But like any, if you're willing to do like slightly super polynomial, you get better than that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so GTK is a, is some uh, instance, okay, from approximate density P. Uh, and what you're going to do is the following. It's fairly similar. Uh, well, using some of some of the ideas from the Newman residential Sudan reduction, okay. But what I'm going to do, so beforehand, we had like G's here, and then we had G tilde here. Okay. Let's forget about that. And let's do, and I'm going to call this G int or intermediate. And this is going to be clear in a bit. In a bit. Um, and I'm going to do this. <laughs> it's also natural. Okay. Maybe it doesn't seem super useful. And, but, and G tilde is again a locally dense code. G, G tilde is a locally dense code where you know these parameters are like seven. From, I won't tell you what it is now because I'm just beside the point, like these computations. But like think about this: there are many points, many code words around S, and this code has large distance. That's it. Okay. And There's many can't grow in the same way it could before. Sorry. Uh, but many cannot grow in the same way it could before. Look at it. 
Well, oh no no it's the oh so no sorry the number of code words can but it's so you can you don't have to get that you know we don't have this restriction of like having you know having to have like two to the end code words in something right so so the problem before was that the gap depended on the distance and the distance needed to be roughly two to the little m or something yes because because of the counting argument for subjective yes. yes yeah so now we don't we don't we don't have it in your map so we, okay it could work Okay, but now I mean it's not going to work either way. It's like this is kind of stupid. It's not really sure. like embrace the fact that you're going to get like crappy vectors uh, uh, in the no case. Okay, that's the, the intuition is beforehand we have this problem that's like oh in the no case we may have like short vectors uh, in this code, right? Like although everything's like far from the target, there may be short vectors because they're well short. There can be there may be a few. But I'm going to make sure that, like, in the yes case, they're going to be like way more good vectors. So more good, more vectors that are like close to the target. Like if you compare the two, this one has more, this one has less. So if you randomly sparsify your code, yeah. you're going to keep at least one of the good ones, but you're going to get rid of one of that. Oh, okay. So this is the first step. It's like you look at this, and now let's just do a counting of like saying how many good words, how many good vectors are there in the yes case, how many bad vectors are there in the no case. Mm -hmm. okay, in the yes case, uh, you know there is. <coughs> like, let me know what I'm doing on time. Um, but yeah, you're fine. You have been tight. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're four. Yeah, that's fine. I, I think I'm I'm good. If you can do it to five, that's okay. All right. Uh, so there is an X such that okay. So this is really just the definition of what it means to be a yes case. Okay. So there is an X that it, you know the code word is close to the target. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so now what we're going to do is follow. Look at each y, and y is going to be an input to our locally dense code. Okay, so each y that is like close to s, I get a good a good vector, like a vector that is close to that is going to be like short. Okay, why? Because point y is that. Okay, so for every guy that I get this, then I look at this vector, it's like an associated vector, z is a y. And if I just look at So I just look at the Hemming weights of this vector. This is really the Hemming weight of gx minus t plus the Hemming weight of g to the y minus x. This is This is what I call my k prime. This is my new k prime. So now, okay. So still, we still have this thing where, like, well, if this is going to work. My locally dense code will have to have D like independent of the dimension. Right? right. So D will be more like K and less like yeah, uh, D is M. like yeah. K. Uh, D is actually like exactly the other times K. Right? Yeah. Right. So yeah. implies that we have uh, at least the M, where this M, okay, good vectors. Okay, so can you, yeah. So um, in that example, so where you needed C tilde intersection, this ball, right? Yeah. This needs to be at least cap. When this needed to be something like two to the n, mm -hmm. then you cannot do away with d less than n, right? Or something like that. Yes. In oh, good, case, good. Yes. Yeah. yeah but now, but now, now, right? Because so. so but when you said there d equals gamma k, um, yes, uh, 
K yeah, equals gamma K, you won't you won't get anything beyond like M tilde to the D. Right. So so keeping these two simultaneously is a problem, right? Potentially, but the thing is that beforehand, you know, even if you want, you need like the number of coders to go like two to the end roughly because of the subjectivity thing. But now you just need to for it to grow larger than the number of bad vectors that we're going to compute. Okay. Ah. And, and we're going to get there. So I'm not saying that this, I know, you know, we're still like finding out if this works. But in the no case, so in the yes case, we get n good vectors. Okay, big n, which is unrelated to small n. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so in the no case, uh, basically all code words are far, right? Right, so all covers are fine. Let's look at, you know, call Z uh, bad if, you know, this is a short vector in the code. Okay. Maybe, uh, well, if you like, yeah, let's make this part. Okay. I'm going to say I'm going to call the bad vectors for me are short vectors in the code. Okay, what do I do? I, I, I want to upper bound the number of these bad vectors. Isn't that do greater than equal to gamma? No, no, no. Okay. In no case, I want I want to. Right? So you're finding. Okay, these are okay. Thing. They're bad. The no case, if you okay. remove them, everything left is actually exactly. Okay. So, I, like in the no case, ideally, I wouldn't have short vectors, but that's unavoidable that with this matrix, I will have short vectors. Okay. So this is right. Right. But I want to bound them. I want to bound their number, and I want to say, well, they're way fewer than the number of good vectors I have in the yes case. Oh, there's at least K. Yes, no, K. Okay, so let me choose here. So, like Z. No, that should be gamma. Yeah, yeah it should be gamma K on top. Yeah, right? In the Where? Sorry? The, no, the definition of no. <laughs> right? So, if no, that means that T is at least gamma oh, K yeah. far away from the. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, but then how could how could any Z be bad? I mean, at the start, at least. Well, you could because you just couldn't, you could just not think this and not take this. That's that's the whole point how oh, you don't think yeah. it's like if you don't think oh, this, either you pay this or you don't take it and you, and you could potentially survive, right? Right. So uh -huh. so if you think a vector of this form, okay, yeah. then yeah, yeah, yeah. Z is only that <coughs> if well, y equals zero and no. theta equals yeah. zero. Yeah, okay, fair. why? Because if beta because is G has large distance and the other guy, yes. Yeah, so if beta is not zero, uh you're gonna play well, this is gonna be far. If beta is zero, but this one isn't, then you're gonna get the distance for this. Okay. And so you're just like this. So all the vectors are of this form. Okay, so they're all like well, they're all from <laughs> x zero zero. And now we can count, okay. How many vectors can there be? How many bad vectors can there be? Right? To, to the Q to the N? Mm, no, oh, no, even, no, even fewer, right? Mm. Because. Mm. Because mm. vectors, bad vectors here are actually bad vectors <laughs> for this, right? So it gets a bit of Look at this. So really you can just look at F. Yeah, certainly at most to the end, but Q the M. Okay, M. The only image for this guy. And you're really just counting the number of things here, right? Um no, actually. So so you're counting the number of bad Z's or the number of, of bad images of Z? Well, bad images, right? Well, it's not the same thing. There could be. Uh, yeah. Um, 
<laughs> so you call g int of z bad or something like this. Right, because there could be many z's yeah, that map to the same. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, no, no, no. This is right. No, because it's uh, it's uh, it's it, it's injected. What's well, injected? Right. Right. Because it's fair enough. So I really, I really just need to count. I really just need the volume of this that follows with the hanging ball of radius delta times k. <laughs> but in this space, right? Mm -hmm. But note that, like, I can, you know, what I'm going to do with them, like, I can set this guy to be much larger than g. Gamma k log n, much Uh, So this is like, at most, um, yeah, so things like um, roughly, I can do this and be like this one. Yeah. So, how are you calculating this? Oh, no, maybe, maybe I'm missing something. No, no, I, I just don't know why. No, no, I'm definitely missing something here. Um, I think I can do this. This is at the most. Mm, um, is it just a binary coefficient type of thing? Just, just, just some mm -hmm. of the oh, yeah. no, no, but like not, it's not terribly important. Like it's yeah. so something you could go on Wikipedia and yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> but but there's an equality there. No, but there's this log n factor which is in, in the exponent. I mean, right? There's this log n factor. Why? Well, m, m to the power of something. Right, the point is that it doesn't. Uh, it I, is. No. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to make track, keep track that uh, like there's some parameter that can only depend on k, and currently this number has. A, oh yeah, this number has an m there dependence, right? Four. And you you're gonna have to get rid of it somehow, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think for now we're fine because the for problem, now, right? the problem, what, what happened before that was problematic was that the n, the, remember the the DMS reduction, like. The number of code words had to be at least two to the n, right? So the n is in the exponent, which is bad. But right. here, it's like sure you have this small thing because you're saying like gamma d times gamma k, gamma k times log n. Was this is a problem? Gamma k times log n. Well, yeah, it, I mean, m, but, 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 m to the k is not FPT, right? Okay. It's not well, fixed parameter yet, at least yet. It's not yet. Maybe it will be fixed, but uh, am I wrong? Or it can be fixed? Uh, <laughs> or maybe it doesn't need, uh, I don't know. Fine, 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 because okay, this way. Um, uh, so now, uh, well, I want to set m big m to be at least this, oh, right? Um, Maybe, maybe we can discuss how we do this. <clears throat> so, um, I don't know. Okay, so, so, so. Let me, let me, okay, so let me do it here that. Factors. Okay. okay, before I guess I dive into like how you make the parameters work, uh, which honestly it's not it's not that complicated. Yeah, I think you are bombing an amount of code words in a bar. Right? Yes, basically, thank you. You are bombing it by the volume of the bar. Yes. And you could do something better, right? Divide by minimum distance. Yeah, you could but I think it won't matter. Uh divide the volume of minimum distance. By two. The point that you don't know the minimum distance of oh, GT. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't think you can do something much better than that. But like it, it, it won't matter because it's interesting. Um, but yeah, this is like a very naive bound. Like you have a bound of number of bad vectors. So if you know if, if it happens that n, which is your number of good vectors, is like much much larger. Let's say that at least. You know, a million times larger than the number of bad vectors. Okay. <clears throat> then we're fine. Okay, because what we're gonna do is the following. We just we just do we just part the pi how intermediate 
And well, it's far too funny. I mean, ideally, what we'd like to do is just like I just keep every vector with a certain probability. Okay. I can do that because I need to like keep my code structure, right? So what I like to do is I'd say, well, every, I look at every vector and I keep it with probability like P. Okay. And I can choose P because of this, such that with high probability, I keep at least one good vector in the yes case. And with high probability, I get rid of all the bad vectors in the no case. Okay, so this is what I would like to do. I can't because, well, I need to, like, in the end, it's something to build in your code, right? A subspace. Uh, but, okay, I, I can kind of do this by doing the following. So, uh, actually, uh, what you do is you just uh, use sample uh, random linear code, okay? Love the appropriate dimension. And then take the intersection of these random codes with your intermediate code. Mm -hmm. so think about what is like adding random linear constraints to your code. This is exactly what's what's happening. You add random so a few random linear constraints and hope that like well, you know, if you fix just a coordinate, uh, sorry, a code word, right? <laughs> it is true that, like, if you set things, you know, you know, if you yeah. this code, you know, this approximate counting is for this reduction to unique. Um... So if this code has code dimension H, which is, um, yeah. so code dimension is just like the difference between the dimension and the length, okay? And based on the probability that, like, any vector within the code is q to the minus h. Okay. Just like think about adding h linear constraints randomly to your code. Okay. So this happens. So, kind of like if you just look at one code word, this is true. Like, this kind of dream view is true. If you look at several code words, it is not true because they're not independent anymore. But it's still okay because they are pairwise independent. If you just look at like, if you look at two linearly independent vectors, the the problem that they both belong to the code it is independent. <laughs> so now you know I won't get to the detail, but just use chain chat to bound. So one of the directions is easy, right? Because you say, well, you know, just using this, you can show that you can get rid of all the bad vectors because you need bound. To say, well, know that each bad vector is kept is really small, so just union bound over all bad vectors. To deal with the good vectors, you use the fact that that I kind of brought over here that you can choose your good vectors to be really independent. And now they're so basically they're a collection of like pairwise independent random variables. And I'll just use generation. Okay, but this is like I, I would call it like you can you can. With it, like some more work yeah. or like some, some force, like a massive force. Um, so I can say if V and V prime are linearly independent, then the, these two um, events. Are independent. Okay. So we just use this. So we have a, a bunch of like pairwise independent variables. Uh, you just want to bound the problem that your sum is zero, which means that like 
nobody survived, no good vector survived this, this diversification. And Chevy Chef takes care of it and shows you that the type of with at least one guy is survived. So you want both one guy survives and all of bad guys die. Yeah, it's like at least one guy survives and all the bad guys are gone. Uh, but yeah, but this step here is just like once you have this setup, it's it's easy. Okay. If you know what you're looking for, which is sparse application. Um so uh you wanted to do let's just I guess we can do the local desk code. It's, it's parameters. Like you want to see the parameters working out, right? Sure. Yeah, why not? So, okay. okay. Let's let's try and see and see what happens. So I'm gonna have to erase it in that line. Or do you still want to discuss it with this this part application? So I understand not to understand what that. So our final reduction doesn't I mean, should it bypass the locally dense code? By using sparse application, or can it first do this? We will use local message. No, I, I don't mean uh, bypass it in that sense. I, I'm just so once you've done the sparse application, you're uh... like once you do the sparse application. Uh... Yeah, so, so I'm just wondering what the fixed parameter tractability of it. Yeah. Um, the only problem was that K prime. Might... So the only problem in the DMS reduction was the construction of the local it was the locally dense code that you needed. Yes. Right, that you needed distance depending on the dimension that you are in. Right, so that's that K prime depended on things yeah, apart. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And here was but the running time was fine. Sorry? The running time was fine. The running time was fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So run like any polynomial net, because of, yeah, I mean, think about it, K is always at most n. So like poly, like K won't be in the Oh, okay, sure. So, so any that part is, yeah. is usually like not a problem. Yes. Really, the problem is like getting the parameters that won't depend on, on the original parameter. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not there. Like, what, what are you talking about linearly independent? So, the set of bad vectors is not a set of linearly no, independent. No, I don't care about bad vectors. I care about the good vectors. Um, so, if you really care about making, okay, easy way, there are two ways to deal with this. Like, pretend that I actually added here an, an extra, uh, an extra, um, bro. Okay. Um, well, let's put it, let's not do this because I think you're going to change what I did there. But like, let's put it this way. Um, set of good vectors is also not a set of linearly independent vectors. <laughs> no, but you can like just keep one vector per line. So divide by Q the number of good vectors. Um, divide by Q the number of good vectors. So like the, the expected number of good vectors is fine because that doesn't depend on linear independence. The expectation is good, but you but, need concentration. Right. You so, need a bit of concentration, so you need linear independence. So you rather you have you, you have two ways. Either you augment your matrix here in an extra row that guarantee that your good vectors say they all have your last order being equal to one, which means that they're all going to be linearly really independent. Okay. So okay. pretend like if, if it helps for you, pretend you're over uh, uh, a field of order two. Okay. So every two distinct sure. vectors are linearly really independent. Oh, oh, sure. But if you but every if you over Q, okay. if you over Q, then for every Q okay. vectors, at least uh, one of them like my, my confusion is not this. Yeah, okay. Like I, every, I got it. Yeah. But 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 you see like over Q, there are like <clears throat> there's this row, right? Yeah, there's, there's yeah. this line, but but it's fine. So. But yeah, you just take one vector line. So you reduce <laughs> the number of vectors by a factor of Q, but Q is like a constant, so you're fine. Potentially, right? Mm -hmm. You have to work on the whole that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Like potentially it's fine. I see. I see. Okay. Is that okay then? Because like I to deal with the bad so. vectors, you really only need the union bound uh, using this fact. I see. Okay. 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 <clears throat> nice. That's more yeah, that's no idea. Yeah. But again, it's like this is something you could give us a take home oh. homework for like your complexity theory class or whatever. Right. So I'm going to erase just so we can discuss the local events. Is that okay? Okay. That's it, no? And what? You specify? You can be a tenant. As long as you, uh, if you believe that we have the local events code, then yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, okay.
So n needs to be like a million times qm to the gamma k or something. Yeah. So this is like <laughs> we have our gold size. So this is like <laughs> that's my goal. Uh, and let me put here what is the local vector and what do I need. Do I need the following, right? I'm just write it down. Yes, such that. And is this versification where the randomness comes in? Okay, but also, Sorry. so where does the randomness come in? Is in the construction of the code and the sparsification? So there are, yeah, sparsification is randomness and construction of the local events code is also randomness. So you don't know explicit construction of the local events code? For this parameter, no. For Let's the see. DMS parameter, which is like linear distance, yes. Hmm. So like for linear distance, what they do is they use some like read solomon on concatenating. Which is like the classical thing if you want to like. I think I think that's what they use. Here we need to we cannot do that because we have fixed distance. Kind of. <laughs> but like it's a very there's a very natural thing. I'll show you. There's a very natural thing one can do. Um, so we need this, and we need that if you look at this, right? So we need this. No, but this isolation. I mean, maybe you could do this one, but I don't see how to do the other one. What? Sorry? Like this random code that you, I don't know, so, somehow I have this impression that this random code that you intersected with, you're doing this kind of isolation thing. What do you mean by isolation? Well, this is isolation, it's or might be isolation and more approximate counting. You do this thing where you intersect your set of witnesses with a random subspace, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that kind of works, but you really don't know how to do randomize that essentially because. Uh, oh, yeah, that's like right. But like, we don't know how to do Okay, let's put it this way. I mean, we don't know how to do de randomize cost reduction because if you could do that, you just have the basic reductions for lattices. We don't have that. Like, you know, but, so that, that's why it's so hard because, like, the techniques that we do have, so there are different, like, the DMS reduction that, that you saw. Like, th these ideas can also be applied to lattices. You can also have a linear map, you can also do things like that. Um, and there you get basically <clears throat> one-sided error. Here we get two-sided, so it's worse in that respect. Uh, but in, right now, this is the only thing that works, right? So if you get if you get like deterministic reductions for the one hardest coding, or deterministic for empty hardest and lattice problems, both are very interesting. And we don't know because again, like if you need a specification, it's really really hard. To like yeah, you know, how, how would you even do this, right? Yeah. Because then if you fix it, then like your listings can be chosen adversarially based on, right? So it's kind of like, it seems like randomness is kind of inherent to this approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need it, right? So it's the missing piece, kind of. So how do we do this? I mean, easy. Okay. Like again, yeah, nothing new. Um, you take G tilde, the user is generating a matrix of a uh, so distance. Uh, say, I'm going to teach one plus gamma times k, so it's larger than gamma, than this, than gamma times k. Uh, and Co-dimension uh, H. I won't tell you right now what H is. H is something. Co-dimension is really just uh, M tilde minus M tilde. So length minus dimension. So think about the length. It's the number of linear constraints that define the code. Uh, okay. Randomly generated matrix of that, random. what? like we know codes that do this. Okay, so I'm going to tell you that this is actually going to be just so the point is like I don't need to fix oh. the code right now. It's like my construction will work for any code that you put here that satisfies this. Uh -huh. And then I can just pick the natural choice, which is QRE PCH codes. Like if you if you ever if you're ever like in a coding setting and you think I need a code with distance this, then it's like then the best choice is a PCH code. And 
Yeah, this is kind of, it's so like that a, lambda k plus one, well, like one one, or is did you forget a parenthesis? No. You mean this? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just plus one, plus one, meaning Hamming distance is lambda k plus one. Yeah, just like it's not complete lambda. <clears throat> oh, I see. Okay. okay. So, so Encode whatever. dimension. Okay. And what I do mm. is just the following. Okay. I take s. So this is the random, the, the randomized part, which is I'm going to sample s. Okay. Oh. And I, and I'm going to sample S from the set of <coughs> basically from the ball of radius alpha times C um, around zero. So I'm going to sample S. So I'm going to sample S to be like a sparse vector. Essentially, that's what I'm saying. And the sparsity is for alpha times D. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, okay, so, so basically what's going to happen, like the only thing that happens here is that when you look at a ball, so this is the ball of radius alpha times C. Okay. If this is F U D times C. Okay. And right, we have the subspace G tilde. Okay, G tilde extends the subspace. And we can kind of like so, so let's we can look at uh, L sets. Okay, so what are cosets? They're really just shifts of my code. Okay, so two things to say. Well, all of the cosets have the same cardinality, they're disjoint. Because well, you know, if, if any two code words right. like one of the codes that their difference is a code word, right? So these guys, so let me just some observations. One, there are U to the H codes. Two, they're all just right. Okay, so here we're using the linearity of the code. Okay. But so so what happens? Like if you look at the ball, right? Uh it, it's like the ball is being like carved up, it's like being partitioned according to cosets. Like think about the cosets, how they intersect the ball. Okay. So there's something like this going on. And This thing here, okay, that with, which, which is what we want, it's like the intersection of the code is that, right? Um, <coughs> so, um, so uh, if I look at this, <coughs> okay, so think about shifting your code, C tilde by S, shifting by S. Now you have a coset, right? But now you're not on the ball around S, you're on the ball around zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically, the number of code words around S is basically the same as the type of the intersection of the coset defined by S. And the ball at the origin, the central ball. Okay. But now it's fine because now you can say, well, why is it going to work essentially? Because, well, if the coset is small, then the probability that your S lands in that coset is also smaller. So, on it, like you're going to land on like an average coset. Mm -hmm. If there are Q to the H cosets, the size of the intersection, so I can say here that like average intersection. Uh, like if you take the coset at random, which we're not doing because now it's picked weighed by the the size, which is good for us, right? But like average intersection is roughly it's well, it's volume of the ball, right? Okay. 
divided by Q to the H. Does that make sense? Yeah, they're all destroyed. And... So pretend that you're picking the whole set at random. That's going to be like your average type of. Uh, this intuition is like not 100% correct, what I'm saying. So, like, pretend that they're all the same size. That's going to be the size of your average. Okay. But now it's actually, this is, a, this is the worst situation than what you're in because. Now it's actually like when the coset, when the intersection of the coset is smaller, you have a lower chance of ending there, of ending up there, which is good because then, like, you know, the other intersection is so just, you know, use mark one, right? And just say, well, then, like, you have to say 99% probability, okay? Um, Probability <laughs> you land on a coset V, which you know, size of V intersect intersection. So for example, you say from probably ninety nine percent, just divide it by a hundred. So let me say I can kind of like lower down this by something like this and um what's the best way to do this? So I can do something like M to the E. I can do something like this. And don't quote me on the bounds, but like something like this. Like just 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 use <laughs> standard bound <laughs> by the Okay, so if I sample S, the number of code words N, okay, will be at least this. So uh, where I can push it, but like maybe here. So yeah, what I'm what I'm comparing, I'm comparing uh, m tilde alpha v over you know a hundred v to the h v to the h uh, versus this, right? Now this part is a bit boring because it's really just computations, but what's happening? Two things. One, I can take M till that be much larger than M. Like polynomial factor larger. Like one over alpha times larger at least. In, in like the exponent. Raise it to like one over or like a hundred times one over alpha. Does that make sense? So so why why are why aren't we running into a problem? It's because or oh, this should be sorry, I said I put alpha v here, but this should be alpha. No. Because D, okay, is not like so. So 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 what's the, the thing like you were saying, like you were kind of worried because the I guess there was a K here and an M here. But the thing is that it, it just organically appears when you when you completely evolve it, right? So as long as M tilde is like suitably larger than than M, mm -hmm. so your G tilde code is like suitably longer than your than, than your input code. This is going to be fine so long as this co-dimension H is like not too large. Okay, you do have to play for this, okay? And <clears throat> um, what you can do is just take the best codes that we know, okay, BCH codes. For BCH codes. This parameter here is um, roughly so if I do QRE VCH, uh, I guess here is something like 
um, you to the right. And this is where we're going to survive. Okay, look at this. Uh, So, so the, 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 the name of this is like really quite good. Uh, okay, so U to the H is M tilde raised to one minus one over Q times gamma. Okay, This is because the, the redundancy of BCH goes is one minus one over Q times gamma K times the log M tilde. That's like nearly optimal. It's it's like it's not nearly optimal, it's like good. For nearly optimal, we need this to be half. You replace the one minus one over Q by half, which you know if Q equals two, which is yeah. what we needed, this is actually two. But like as soon as you go to like Q equals three, you're done. Okay, the for their case. So Again, like this is not, it's just like, it just works, okay? So this here goes and it works. Um, so now if you compare, okay, so what happens, right? You need to set alpha appropriately, but set alpha to be larger than one minus one over Q, okay? And things are just gonna work out, okay? Because you have, you have freedom with the track of alpha, mm -hmm. right? You can choose your alpha to be larger. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so I can't believe like if you know if you know the code specifically like PCH. So what are you asking now? You want a code word that has a large intersection? I want, you know, I want that has a large code word, right? That has a large. I want, you want an S that has a large. Um, yeah, and I, I I think that maybe this part you could hope to do it to this. Yeah, you could. But the classification you're, you're. No, no, I'm I, I'm sure, but <laughs> but you could probably find out what such a word is, right? It's an explicit code. I mean, you have the code. Uh, what's the word that has a, lo a large neighborhood or something? Yeah, it's just one of them. It's just one of them. Right. Yeah, exactly. I actually like to look too too closely into it. Maybe the techniques that you use for like these other. You think this would be hard? Like, mm -hmm. uh, well, it's true that. I mean, I don't know. Do you think it's good hard to find? You know, it's all here's like and when when you just like with the with the DMS reduction, you have to take like linear distance. I think you have a bit more freedom and like the parameter choice because you can choose the distance kind of as you like, but here the distance needs to be like grow with k. So you kind of need this if you wanted to find this deterministic, this this uh, vector deterministically, it you need it to work for like every distance. Right? You need your algorithm to say, you give me a distance, I'm going to find you something that just behaves well at this distance. And then you, like, you write that, like, yeah, DCH are kind of like read Solomon curves. So, like, there could be something, and maybe, you know, uh, maybe there could be something, but then you still have to do with the construction application. And that's the really, really, really massive part. Yeah. So, no, no, sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so let me let me just um I think we're almost out of time, kind of. Um uh let me just say a few words about like these other results that we get. We've got three results. Um I just want to talk about this other the second one of the other ones. Uh that also uses cost reduction. Like all the main ideas, they're really like they already exist. It's really just about thinking about like how to apply it to different contexts. Okay. So let me just quickly, like 15 minutes, just tell me um, what, uh, what's happening. Okay, so let me get rid of this. Um, okay, <clears throat> that is. Um, so these guys, they also showed. Um, Well, we show double one partners. You know, if you get results for code, usually they do get results for lattices. Okay, with the caveat being that maybe you won't get like large approximation factors because this amplification thing is uh, really for lattices. Okay, so we got partners of just approximate EDP uh, or basically any gamma. Okay. 
cost of gun. Okay. Anything not to be one hardness of approximate SVP, okay, or but only for P larger than one, when you, you know, L1 norms is not considered. Okay. The reason is that actually if you apply cost reduction in the lattice world, it doesn't work in the L1 norm. In the, in the NP world, this doesn't matter because there is a technical sense in which LDL2 norm is actually the easiest norm. So if you just prove something is hard in L2, then something is going to be hard in all the other norms. Um, the theory doesn't make a difference because those techniques just don't apply to the as well. So they, try, they use it for P larger than one and some, okay, down. Like really tiny gun. So you only get like you know 1.01 hardness of approximation. Um, so what we do, okay, so we kind of keep paying this, and we got okay, this is this is disappointing. Okay, why couldn't they do this? Well, because um it's actually interesting because okay, so they apply plots like how do you get the result? Well, you work hard to get this result, which they did. It's a really it's really nice. And then to get this, you just apply cost reduction, which I just showed that it's like it's FAT, but you apply it to the lattice world to replace it at locally then scope by a much less lattice. Okay. Same concept. Okay. And you can again you can you can construct that. Um but it, and it and, and it's interesting because cost reduction in the lattice world, we know it tends to nicely in the sense that if, if you want to amplify the gap you get. Just take the components of the lattices that you get in cost reduction. Okay. The caveat is that this, so the, the, the problem is that um, this relies on the fact that your closest vector problem instances come from set cover. Okay. And set cover is not going to be the only one hard. So we cannot use those instances, which means that. Cost strategy just doesn't work. So it doesn't give you this amplification. Okay. So you need to do this amplification in some other way. Okay. So that's what we did. We we came up with like we we use cost reduction, but we apply it to a different problem. And the idea is basically like maybe I don't go over this too much, but like this is you basically apply. Cost reduction um, instead of applying it to close effective problem to go to short effective problem. Okay. We apply it to the nearest scope of problem, which is a code problem. Okay. We apply it to the approximate version of the nearest code word over binary codes. And we transform this into a short effective problem instance over large instance. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the, the, the main difference here is that instead of like taking lattice problem into lattice problem, we take coding problem into lattice problem. With cost reduction still, and I can I can show you how. Let me just show you like how we set things up. Okay, um, and it's almost exactly like that. But like, okay, so what's what's going on here? It's like you get a code and you come up with a code. Now it's like you get a code and you come up with a lattice. Okay, and if you think about this, like, what's the most natural way of getting a lattice from a code? And there's this thing very natural. Okay. Called uh, construction A. Uh, this is a terrible name, by the way. This is actually. Yeah, then there's construction A, there's construction B, C, D, and it's like I never remember which one to switch, so I only know construction A. Uh, there's this book by you know, John Conway. Mm -hmm. They have all these names. Uh, yeah. Uh, so construction A. So let me tell you where it is. How do you build a lattice from a code? Okay, so C is a code. Okay, uh, construction A. 
it's really stupid. Okay, so it seems to go binary based on binary codes. But these works over any prime to the new C prime. Okay. So here's your lens. So like you have all the even guys, like you just like shift the code by all the even vectors. You just have to they exist. Yeah, so in other words, oh, it's like yeah. this. L is all the lattice vectors. So that if you think in one, two, there are there. Are... Yeah. <coughs> See, next. So then... Okay. Very natural construction. Um like you, you, you kind of inherit a lot of nice properties of your code, okay? And why is this good? Okay, so, 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 think about it this way, okay? So, the reason why codes tensor nicely is because you have a lower bound on the heavy weight. It's like, think about it this way. If I like, if I, mm -hmm. if I take the tensor curve with two vectors with large end weights, I'm gonna get a vector that's like, yeah. well, the, the, the heavy weight is gonna like multiply, okay? So if I could lower down the hemming weight of my lattice instead of just like the L2 norm, okay, then it would tensor nice, okay? So that's kind of like what we're trying to, to do and this, is, this cannot be done, but there are there are some conditions that kind of capture, like, the, like you'd say, basically the conditions say, if your lattice looks like a code, then your lattice tensors nice. Okay, so you just need to make your lattice look like a code. So I guess the coding column is a natural starting point for a lattice that tensors nicely. Okay. So how do you get the lattice? Okay. So here's your lattice with your uh, intermediate bases. Again, it's like we get the intermediate base, and then at the end we need to sparkify our lattice. Yeah. That's fine. That's completely standard. Okay. So the lattice that we get is the following. We so we get a code. We need to turn it into a lattice. That's what you're Okay. So this is just uh, the basis for SCP is really just the basis for P for construction A applied to my input code. Okay. And now, you know, I have a locally dense code. Turning into a lattice. This is really a basis for uh, construction A applies to this VCH code that you have. Okay. So now uh, you have a target and you have another target. They stay the same, zero one vectors. And for technical reasons, I actually need to multiply these bases by two and this target by two. Okay. Um, so the good thing about this is that yeah, so this is like a lattice that's like very close to a code. Okay. So I think just I don't want to take an extra like hour of your time. Um, but but the idea is that. Uh, there are these conductors also, um, Ishaya B and Golden Dragon. They have uh, basically a paper that tells you know, if your Latin satisfies condition like one, two, and three, then it answers nicely. Okay. So that's what they use to show that cuts instantly tend to nicely if your original thing comes from set common, basically. If like your Golden Dragon problem instances are actually hidden set cover instances. Okay. Uh, we basically show that instead of taking like set cover, we take like nearest common problem, those conditions are still satisfied if you do this construction A type thing. And then the idea of the reduction is still the same. We just need to check these extra like technical, technical conditions, which is really saying that like in certain cases, the heavy weight of your lattice vector will be larger. So, so the, the, the constraints we have is that either your L key norm is really, really large, or the heavy weight is large. That's the that's the gist of it. Okay. Um, so now that the tensor is nice, you can get any gamma. Yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah. So so here the difference, so the difference on the left side is really reducing from a different problem, 
the difference on the coding side is really taking this reduction from the lattice world and using it in the coding world. And these techniques really just um, work. Okay. We also have another result where you know we are this here for p minus one. There are the p equals one missing, and we take care of that. Except that class reduction doesn't work for p equals one, which means that we don't we don't get the dense, we don't get the harvest for any approximation factor. We get harvest for a tiny approximation factor, like I think it's like two. So we get two. We get we get harvest for two approximation for L one more, but not for the two not two higher. But the techniques are completely different. This is the... no, it's it's class reduction okay. with a different local index lattice. Uh, yeah, and it works for p equals one after that. It works for p equals one. The, the, the thing is that, um, the, the, the cost, cost reduction in the lattice world also uses um, DCH. So, so this, this thing here that you're seeing with like um, this construction aid, okay, um, um, it also uses it. Okay, and it's just if you try to compute the parameters like we're doing with like how large you need to make alpha to make this work. Okay, it's like alpha needs to be always as large as half plus p to the minus p. Okay, mm -hmm. so if p equals one, you're done because need alpha to be smaller than one. But as soon as p larger than one, then you can make alpha exclusively large. Okay, but this is a matter of just like computations. Essentially. Um, and yeah, so 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 the, the open ball here really well besides you know getting into this reduction, the one I think is pretty approachable is getting getting like larger approximation factors for the L1 one, which is like the missing piece or the little parts. That's the only thing. Besides the, the problems that I think are really, really hard to get into this reduction. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all for my side. Like of course if you want to hear more details, I'll be happy to show it to you. Uh, but I think I've already done like all I wanted to do is like show you these ideas like currently less. And I also I didn't know about them before starting this project. So yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks for bearing through it. I, I'm sorry if something was like not as clear as it could have been. Um, I don't think this I, I, are there reductions to other things that start off in like coding or like these problems? Like within like think about something like outside the, the coach or the lattice scale, basically. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Oh, yes. I, I just have to be like, if you know of any reductions that start from like coding on lattice problems that don't, that, that they're not trying to put part of another coding on lattice problem. Because I feel like these ideas could be useful somewhere, but like, I don't know what to do with the requirement. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, like, also, this stuff also implies like finding hardness for, for, um, like, the results we get for like W1 hardness. So, actually, W1 hardness is actually a weaker assumption than, like, say, strong, like, mediation with another hypothesis. So, if you take, like, something, yeah, so, like, expansion time hypothesis implies that W1 is not just going to check. Um, but like we also get new find grade results for like automatically because what happens here is that uh, for our parameter setting, our k prime is actually linear in k, um, so we get fine grade hardness results like optimal fine grade hardness results for for this stuff, assuming like get the pH, which is strong, but like yeah, I don't think we can do better than this right now. Because we have the approximation and we have the randomness. And that's, uh, yeah. So okay. usually, if you get like some W1 hardness result, you also get one hardness if your reduction is like this.
Okay.